Uh, my name is uh, Robbie Westerman. I'm an orthopedic surgeon and team physician at UI Sports Medicine. Um, we're going to be talking about uh, some common young athletic hip conditions, um, most notably femoral acetabular impingement. So this is our uh, young adult hip uh, clinic. Uh, we run a, a big combined clinic on Thursdays at UI Sports Medicine. Um, my name is Robbie Westerman. I do hip arthroscopy and also have a general sports medicine practice. Uh, this is my uh, open hip surgery partner, uh, Dr. Mike Willey. Uh, he performs uh, open procedures mostly for uh, hip dysplasia. Uh, these are our two uh, scientists. They're uh, PhDs uh, studying hip biomechanics. Uh, they have uh, um, large uh, uh, grant funding uh, sources and are very collaborative with our uh, clinical efforts. And we also have a specialized hip physical therapist uh, named Amanda who's also evaluating patients in clinic with us. So FAI is a uh, motion related clinical disorder that uh, is characterized by a triad of symptoms, clinical signs and imaging findings. And what it does is it represents premature symptomatic or pathologic contact between the femur and the acetabulum. So this is a uh, schematic or a cartoon of FAI. So there's a big bump in the anterior lateral portion of the head neck junction. This is an actual patient I treated on the left hand side of the screen. And this bump abuts the anterior part of the labrum and the rim of the socket when the hip is in flexion and internal rotation. Um, this causes damage between the uh, front part of the socket uh, cartilage and also the labrum. The labrum is this triangular shaped uh, structure here. Uh, you can have a tear between the labrum and the socket in the front. You can have some delamination of the cartilage in the, um, mostly in the front of the hip joint. Most of this pain is typically referred to the, uh, the front or anterior groin in these uh, athletic young patients. So, but in order to have FAI uh, syndrome, according to the Warwick Agreement, you need all three things. You need symptoms, signs, and uh, imaging findings. Uh, symptoms are typically activity or motion-related uh, anterior groin pain, less commonly back, buttock, or thigh pain. It can also be a, a sharp catching uh, or stabbing pain in the front of the hip uh, or loss of hip uh, range of motion. And most commonly, we see this with cutting and pivoting sports or uh, deep squats um, uh, uh, or uh, the dancers, a high, high, mo high motion hip early on. Uh, the clinical signs, the anterior impingement test is sort of the workhorse, which is the flexion, adduction, and internal rotation test, and that should reproduce the patient's symptoms. We also use Patrick's test, which is the flexion, abduction, external rotation. If, and if pain refers to the front of the hip with the Faber test, then it's a um, positive for hip. Um, but if you do this Faber test here, where you bring the knee out to the side and pain refers to the back, you, you should be thinking something along the line of SI joint or, or posterior hip issues. Imaging findings we typically use are something called the alpha angle, where you draw a best fit circle around the femoral head and you find out where the head neck junction becomes a spherical. You can see this is a pretty large uh, bump on this young uh, high school uh, football player who treated. Uh, so FAI syndrome is uh, typically treated conservatively, at least at first. Uh, we do uh, discuss and offer a corticosteroid or PRP injections. Um, I'm not a huge fan of injections for this uh, issue, but Occasionally, we use them to get athletes through seasons, um, or if uh, patients are sort of uh, undecisive about, uh, about surgery uh, and they want to exhaust all options, uh, we use those uh, as well. Uh, physical therapy is the mainstay of conservative care, in my opinion, and it mostly should focus on core muscle strengthening, uh, lumbar mobility, and uh, hip abductor strengthening. Activity modification should be employed for sure, um, avoidance of, uh, of activities. Uh, cessation from uh, sports or dancing in certain uh, circumstances, and we recommend uh, three months of uh, conservative care before uh, considering uh, surgical treatment. Um, so we're going to also discuss why hip impingement is important, and I hope to convince you of these two things, that unpeated, untreated hip impingement leads uh, to osteoarthritis, and uh, surgery can be successful in appropriately selected patients. This is my favorite uh, prospective study looking at risk factors for developing hip arthritis. This is a 20-year uh, prospective study done in the uh, British health system uh, as a phone call follow-up and uh, they basically took an x-ray of a group of patients and they called them 20 years later and, and found out who had a hip replacement for uh, end-stage arthritis um, and they randomly um, associated uh, randomly selected a controls that did not have hip replacement or arthritis 
And then they used advanced statistics to predict what factors in the hip joint led to arthritis. And they found that uh, the most common things that led to um, hip arthritis were uh, low lateral center edge angle or high alpha angle. So basically impingement or dysplasia. So those are the main two things we treat in the hip. Um, impingement being this, uh, this big bump on the anterolateral uh, head neck junction uh, of the hip or cam type impingement and dysplasia being a shallow socket. This, folk, this talk is mainly focused on hip impingement, but briefly, uh, we are the only center in the, uh, in the state of Iowa that, um, that treats uh, um, hip dysplasia. Uh, this is uh, um, done by myself and my, op my open surgery partner, Dr. Mike Willie. Um, Mike performs a PAO or acetabular reorientation for this uh, condition. And uh, what that entails <clears throat> is a... Uh, a hip that looks like this. this is a very shallow socket. A normal uh, lateral normal angle is over 25 degrees. This is an arm. This is very uh, severely dysplastic, and this uh, patient also has a little bit of mixed impingement, which is a pretty complex case. Uh, but first, Mike does a uh, an acetabular uh, osteotomy. You can see the cuts around the pelvis and the reorientation of the socket. I actually, had this done on both sides, uh, so that the uh, lateral center edge angle is now in normal range. Uh, you can also see this. Uh, this guy had a bump or a cam type impingement here. You can also see it on this specialized view uh, where I took the bump out uh, with a scope uh, as well. So this is uh, one of the services we offer uh, for the state of Iowa, being able to comprehensively uh, treat some of these complex hip conditions. The main uh, condition we do see um, is, uh, is actually impingement. It's more common than dysplasia. Uh, we see these as low range of motion hips, uh, pain of sitting, running, cutting, and pivoting. Um, historically, males uh, had this issue more commonly than females, but with the increasing uh, female participation in sports, uh, these numbers are becoming more equal. And we see them in, uh, in contacts and high hip flexion sports like hockey, uh, football, basketball, uh, track, uh, dancing, things like that. Um, this is the first uh, uh, published prospective randomized controlled trial comparing um, physical therapy to uh, um, hip arthroscopy for FAI syndrome was published in The Lancet uh, about a year and a half ago. Um, the study was done by uh, Damien Griffin, again, that compared uh, surgery uh, versus uh, physical therapy uh, after randomization. So um, what they found was that if you take a hip with impingement like this and reshape it to a hip that's shaped like this, you see uh, meaningful improvements. Um, this is a, um, a graph that represents the improvement in patient reported outcomes uh, from the time of randomization, which is on the left, to one year after randomization, which is on the right. And you see um, that uh, the improvements with uh, hip arthroscopy or surgery were a little bit better than they were with uh, physical therapy. But if you look at the physical therapy group, there was a, a significant number of people who did improve with that uh, alone. Um, so while uh, surgery did outperform PT um, overall when you measure the whole group. We did find, uh, or the, the study did find, that uh, some people did get all the way better with uh, physical therapy. So we do think that it's uh, prudent to, to uh, try physical therapy uh, first uh, as a first line um, uh, intervention. Uh, another uh, similarly uh, performed randomized controlled trial was uh, also done um, in, the, in Britain, and they found, uh, it was published in the British Medical Journal last year, um, and again, they found a similar results. They uh, randomized uh, patients to physical therapy or arthroscopic hip surgery for FAI, and they found that the uh, um, improvements were both, we'll see in both groups, but the improvements were larger uh, in the surgery group comparing the pre-op scores to the uh, one-year uh, post-randomization scores. So these are two prospective multi-center randomized controlled trials that demonstrate a uh, benefit of surgery over physical therapy for uh, patients that present with uh, FAI. So um, just a little bit more about the surgery and what it is. This is um, a cartoon drawing of the labrum. The labrum is this um, uh, cartilaginous ring that surrounds the acetabulum, uh, about uh, 290 or so degrees around the acetabulum, with the transverse acetabular ligament being present on the bottom. Uh, the labrum uh, from the side view is um, uh, transitions between uh, labral cartilage and uh, highline articular cartilage. Um, and when there's a tear, there's a typically disruption between the, uh, the formal labrum and the articular cartilage of the uh, weight-bearing uh, hip joint uh, socket cartilage, basically. So first, we need to break this uh, suction seal. The labrum does perform a, perform a, 
uh, or helps perform a great suction seal on the hip. So this is an intraoperative video after a hip uh, labrum was repaired. And you can see that a good suction seal was restored and you really had to pull pretty hard on the leg in order to get this hip to pop out of socket. Uh, we do a similar thing by releasing the, uh, um, the, the pressure in the hip before we have put our arthroscope into the hip joint in order to safely gain access. This is what the setup looks like. This is just a drape and a and an x-ray arm, we call it a C-arm, uh, that allows us to use x-ray to get inside the hip safely. I typically use two portals for uh, hip arthroscopy, with an anterior lateral and a mid-anterior portal. Um, and this is sort of what the setup looks like with the camera going into the hip here and other instruments going in uh, to hit through a separate incision. Um, these are all the things that sort of go into the hip uh, joint in order to perform arthroscopy safely, shaver instruments, camera, water inflow, uh, light source, um, that sort of thing. This is a, uh, again, the cartoon we uh, uh, looked at earlier um, with the damage between the labrum here and the anterior superior acetabulum here, uh, again, being caused by this big bump here. In the video, this is the bone above the labrum um, uh, on the anterior superior rim of the acetabular socket. This is uh, inside the hip joint, so the femur or the femoral head's on the right, acetabulum's on the left. You can see this big labrum here um, that uh, is being, uh, uh, prepared for repair. So at first we burr down the area behind the labrum in order to uh, create any uh, uh, a bleeding bed for healing for a labral repair to be performed too. Uh, we also um, sometimes see impingement coming from the socket side that can be treated at this time uh, as well. Uh, once we're satisfied with the, uh, the reshaping uh, of, uh, of the anterior and superior aspect of the um, acetabulum, and correct any uh, deformities uh, there. We put anchors into the uh, rim of the socket and we pass them um, either around or through and around the labrum uh, with these uh, passing devices. It's called a bird beak passing device. So the anchor's been placed into the bone. We pass this uh, um, little uh, stitch around the labrum um, and grab it with uh, um, the same uh, device we passed it with. Uh, we sequentially tie these anchors. This is a second anchor that was uh, put in and passed around the labrum. You can see the damage to the uh, um, particular cartilage here uh, underneath the labrum. This is uh, sort of in this zone here. Um, and then a uh, uh, third anchor is actually used to uh, repair this labrum here. This is a different type of uh, a suture or passing device that you can use as a, um, uh, a disposable instrument, but it sometimes allows for a better uh, angle to pass uh, labral stitches too. So, once you've passed uh, all your stitches and tied them, that uh, completes the labral repair. Um, this is a big uh, flap of articular cartilage in the rim of the socket that's being debrided. Um, this is uh, from a very large uh, cam impingement uh, a scenario in a college uh, rugby player, actually. So this is the labrum being repaired here and uh, debriding this articular cartilage down to a stable base. Okay, we don't see any bare bone there, um, but um, that's, uh, that's what it might look like. And this is uh, after a cam resection. So. Um, <clears throat> camera section is done um, through the scope as well. So we like to get an x-ray that shows uh, this bump or the anterior lateral, lateral head neck offset um, uh, deformity. And this is what it looks like through a scope. So this uh, on the left is the cam uh, articular cartilage and we're just kind of showing you a view of inside the hip capsule here. We look all the way from the medial retinacular fold to the lateral retinacular vessels. Um, and this is what the cam looks like prior to resection. And then uh, we use a burr to uh, reshape um, the head neck junction until we make a spherical looking hip. So we take a, a hip that is shaped like a, like a block and carve it into a hip that is shaped uh, more normally, like you can see in the bottom right hand corner here. We use a uh, five millimeter burr, um, a lot of x-ray shots and um, inflow and outflow uh, um, uh, to uh, remove the bony debris that's uh, being removed from the head neck junction with the burr. And once um, you take this uh, <clears throat> um, bump that you can see in the upper left here and you reshape it to the one you can see in the bottom right, um, that's, uh, that's what it looks like here. And uh, uh, arthroscopically, this is what it looks like after you went from uh, basically a bump to a normal shaped um, head neck junction. And if you look back up at the uh, acetabular labrum here, approximately, you can see the repaired labrum. You can then flex the hip up and make sure that there's no more pinching or damage being uh, uh, done on that uh, rim of the socket uh, up in the front part of the hip. 
Um, so basically, we could take a hip with a large bump like this, uh, um, the x ray view to this arthroscopic view to one that's uh, normally shaped here uh, with a normal contour uh, on the uh, arthroscopic view uh, as well. And again, taking a hip that goes from an alpha angle of 80 degrees, where anything over 60 is uh, pathologic, to something that measures in uh, the low 40 degrees, uh, that's uh, um, how you really change the biomechanics and outcomes of patients with. Uh, hip impingement. So I'd like to thank you for, uh, for any, um, uh, for listening. I uh, invite uh, uh, any questions you guys have. You can feel free to email me. This is my email. Um, I take patient referrals over email or uh, follow-up questions. If you're ever treating one of my patients at both shop, the email is a, is a great place to, to get a hold of me um, or to, to get patients into my clinic if you're having a difficulty getting through the, the scheduling system. So uh, don't hesitate. Um, thank you very much for your time.